important things for today's lecture. I based this lecture on my personal experience and on my team's personal experience, which I will share today. Do not take this information, please, as a scientifically proven and the only correct one. Um, so secondly, I was told that your course is called Branding and Visual Communication, so I uh, based the lecture on uh, branding briefs. So we are analyzing the structure of the brief, uh, how to develop a visual identity for a client. Um, as you know, if, if the service is, for example, as a performance marketing, there will be absolutely different type of questions. So today we will be going, we will talk about the visual identity development. And the third one, I will apologize in advance because our designer is busy on another project. And so I made up the presentation as best as I could. So sorry for some graphic nuances. Well, okay, yeah, so we can start. Um, the theme is cracking the client brief. How can a single document revolutionize the entire process? So the lecture outline, we will start uh, with a small introduction. Uh, there will be two parts, like a boring introduction part and the interesting one you will see later. So we are also going to talk about the role of a project manager, who is that guy? Uh, of course, we will be talking about the brief definition, the journey of a brief, a briefing formats and structure, different types of questions in every block. Um, of course, we are also going to talk about challenges of every brief, how to debrief. Debriefing is like a second part of brief and the questions also. So um, the lecture duration is about 60 minutes. So prepare yourself for an hour and let's start. So uh, as I promised the boring introduction part, which explains who am I? Uh, well, my name is Anita Pokrovska. I define myself as a communication strategist. I graduated from the University of Latvia Faculty of Communications. Until the 2012, I worked as a journalist in a different uh, uh, media such as Telegraph, for example, and then uh, with the till the 15 2015 I was working as a public relations specialist. Uh, different fields like architecture bureaus and also a core hotel one brand Mercure, maybe you know it. Uh, two years of my life uh, I sacrificed for uh, creating a large digital media of Riga City Council. Uh, and one year uh, I was working as a chief exec marketing officer, a head of marketing and public relations in Otto Center, where actually your university is located. And when the pandemic started, so we have united the team of best specialists uh, who I was working with in previous uh, places into one digital agency called Match. And now I am working here. So the interesting part begins, which actually explains why am I here, yes, and the actual theme of this lecture, why are we going to talk about briefing and clients, I have, lot, I have worked a lot with the different types of clients. So say hello to myself, this is 1999, that's me, and this is my first connection to the internet, you see my absolutely shocked face. I was really absolutely shocked with the essence of internet, like, come on, uh, you can write down on the web browser, every website, and that was a really shock to me, a nine years old kid. And I was spending like hours sitting there, like exploring forums. And uh, of course, my mom, this is my mom, she was really not happy with that fact. So on one day, she sat down and told me like, honey, no more damn internet for you. And uh, well, I was a kind of teenage negotiator. I always was arguing and that's why I asked like two questions. Mom, why can't I surf internet anymore? And what's the point? So what just happened there? Actually, this is when I did my first brief. Yes, let's shape it in another, another way. Uh, well, actually let's uh, uh, image myself as a junior project manager and my mom as a first client. So basically the statement is no more internet uh, for you today. And um, uh, I asked her two questions, two themes. Yes, what kind of problems is my client trying to solve? What is the main target of this project, of this decision, yes? 
So my mom uh, answered me, yes, logically, you are staying up too late, you're not doing your homework properly, and that, of course, affects your grades at school, and that's bad. So my main target as a client, yes, I want my kid to do well at school because I care about your education, about your health. So I thought a little bit and I come up with the solution. Okay, mom, see, I do my homework straight after coming home from school. Then I read 50 pages from the additional literature program. And then I serve the internet for a well-deserved two hours, yes? And uh, going to bed no later than 10 p.m. I would be happy to tell you that the client approved the commercial proposal, but there's always, you know, like revisions. So she said, no, one hour. I said, okay, you don't know my mom. So yeah, okay. So actually brief is the core document that helps to achieve a win-win result for both client and agency. And you see uh, the situation between me and my mom is a win-win situation because I was allowed to serve the internet and she was happy because I was reading the additional literature and stuff. So um, yes, today this is the reason I'm here and this is the reason why we're talking about briefing. And uh, I'm talking today with you, not like with the graphic designers. I'm talking to you, not like a, some kind of creative people. I'm talking to you as with the leaders, as with the project managers. And we, we're gonna talk about your role in the entire process. So uh, let's imagine there is a client, there is your team, and here's you. So um, I always say to me, to myself, as a, if I am a project manager and to my project managers, that if the project in the end is successful, this is a success of your team and you, of course. But this, if, if the project was a failure, so this is your fault. I am sorry, but that's true. Because if the client is disappointed, if the project is bad, so maybe you uh, didn't understand the basic problems of the clients, yes, his basic needs. Or maybe you have chosen the graphic. I'm always supporting graphic designers. I love those guys because I'm always by their side. If the client is disappointed with the design, this is not the graphic design problem. This is your as a project manager problem because maybe you have chosen the artist whose specific style doesn't match the client needs. So that's not a graphic designer problem. So, okay, who is a project manager in three sentences, yes, in three types? Well, project manager is such, some kind of a translator from client language to language your team will understand. Uh, and uh, then you are going to, um, to change the client brief into the creative brief. And this is uh, somehow the another team. Um, uh, project manager is also a psychic who predicts the preferences, thoughts and fears of the client. And if you ask me, well, is this possible? Yes, it is, because uh, this is the reason actually why I'm not switching on my ad block at all, because I want to see what type of advertising or what type of banners everywhere. Yes, because I need to understand different informational spaces, because your client is also a human being and he lives in a certain information bubble. And you need to understand, to feel um, what perception is based on. Yes. Uh, maybe he li he's living in such kind of informational bubble and we need to feel it and to, to predict. Uh, project manager is also a psychotherapist who helps the client solve their problems uh, because, well, it's often client is kind of deep in his product and you need to help him to show his own product from a different angle. And basically you need to solve the client problems. Uh, and this is the thing I'm always telling my project manager and to myself, uh, don't be an instrument, try to become a solution. And here's the thing, if you are an instrument, you definitely have seen those types of people, of project manager, different specialists, when the, 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 the person is sitting and like waiting, okay, I will wait what the client will tell me to do. So if the client knows what he needs to do, so why are you here? You're an instrument. Just tell me what to do. This is not the, the way you do your job. So if you are providing a solution for a client 
problem. You are in the strong position. So if you're an instrument, you always will be replaceable. I don't like you. Okay, I will take another one. But if you are providing a solution, you will be irreplaceable at all. Okay, so what is the client brief? Yes, the client brief is essentially a recorded document that helps in guiding any project. Well, it explains in and outs um, of um, the project to the agency and other people who are involved in this project. It acts as a blueprint to a project that helps to synchronize all stakeholders involved in the project and bring understand understanding to the group. Uh, it is always a collaboration. This is the most important thing. It is always a collaboration between two parties joining hands to successfully deliver a product. A project. Well, uh, since the client may not have enough experience with creating such documents, agencies often help out uh, the client to understand and describe and it's always going like an interview and this is the reason I don't like briefing clients via email or you know like you definitely seen a lot of automatic briefs on the agency's websites I do not really trust that thing because it, it usually doesn't work at all so the client really needs help your personal help so the aims of a client brief, first of all, to convey what problem will client need solving, to describe their overall brand persona, yes, to define the end result they expect, and to align uh, all contributors uh, with the project requirements, expectations, the overall strategy. Uh, yes, so next one, how does it work in practice? Actually. So it removes misunderstandings. Yes, a client brief reduces the misunderstandings related to a project, eliminating the need for expensive revisions and changes. So once the document is created, communicated, and agreed upon, you can always, this is a protection for yourself, you can always come back to the brief and say, yeah, you said that. You have chosen that type of logo, I don't know. Uh, so, um, yeah, both parties can refer back to it and point during the project uh, completion phases and stay on track. So the next one, uh, brief leads to a better output. So the client, the better the client describes the brand and business issues, the better uh, the agency would be able to work on them and come up with a great result. So this is why it's essential that the client spends more time, yes, creating this brief together with you and collaborates with you to create this document. So the clients will never tell you this is not what I was waiting for at the end. Uh, so and the third one, a good brief saves time and headaches, yes. Uh, having everything thought through and agreed upon can benefit both the client and the agency. Once the client has written their brief and effectively communicated uh, to the agency, agency can, can go on and do the work more freely. So it saves your time and your both time, your and client's time. So the journey of a brief, and uh, I will tell you in this part, in a nutshell, how the stages of briefing occur in, at most agencies, and then will I share with you my own personal experience and experience of my team uh, during uh, the briefing and explain how and why they differ. So basic steps, yes, uh, it always starts with the first contact and briefing, the first one, when the client came to the agency and uh, they just filled the brief form. Next one, agency preparing a commercial proposal regarding to the brief. Uh, then there is a approval of a proposal, uh, conclusion of a contract. Debriefing is the second stage of briefing. We're going to talk about it a little bit later. So then agency start it work and a final result. Of course, I have, um, I don't mention a lot of touch points on every phase uh, between the start to work and final result. Of course, there will be a lot of touch points while clients are seeing what we are doing and approving every step. Uh, but this is, uh, that doesn't connect it with the brief. So my basic um, 
I wanted just to show where the brief appears. So how do we do it? So here comes the first concept. If the client come to us or we reach the client, and uh, this is very important because I uh, prepared these um, this slides only regarding branding and identity design because it's like a typical thing, a typical service, and we can standardize it more. And uh, of course, this is all depends on the client and the specific service and the specific request. This is based. This is based more for a small and medium-sized companies. So, okay, here comes the first contact, and we just uh, get the basic information. What do they need? If we know they need, hey, I need a new logo, and I need a redesign, or I need a whole branding with the brand strategy, we are just sending. Uh, at that time, commercial proposal packages. We have ready commercial proposal packages for that type of service. We know that's typical things that like the same in every, every request. So um, important thing, why? Yeah, next one, I'm sorry. So next one is the approval of the proposal, conclusion of a contract. That on, and only then we start the deep briefing phase, then come the, the debriefing phase, and then we start our work and then um, you see the final result. Why are we doing like that? Because our payment, our salary is based on our time. If we are briefing and I prefer like prepare myself and our project managers are preparing for a briefing, they are collecting a lot of information, analyzing it with the client. So if we spend a lot of time briefing every client that and, and client at the same time, it doesn't know our hourly rates or it doesn't know how much will it cost in the end. Well, we would be doing only one thing that we will be briefing and briefing and client when he will get the commercial proposal, he will say like, no, I didn't expect it's too expensive. And that's all. So we are trying to standardize this procedure and we are like sending the, these proposal packages. And the most important things about the revisions, yes, every package includes a very specific amount of specialist hours. Yes, for example, 40 hours of graphic designer, he will do that, that and that. If clients at the end will decide to change something, yes, and he will be making more than a two revisions included in the uh, commercial offer. So we are warning our client that who, he would be, should be prepared to pay more. In that time, when, for example, uh, after the debriefing stages and after the start of work, somewhere near the end of the final product, he starts making his changes and revisions. We warn him, hey, we are now switching on the hourly rate. So you will, should be ready to pay more. And that's totally okay. Somewhere uh, before the debriefing, we are uh, taking a prepayment also. Basically it's uh, around 50%. So this also somehow protects us. So this is how it works about the debriefing. We will be talking a little bit later. So let's talk about the briefing formats. How does it work? Well, there is like basic three types. Yes, you, the best one is face-to-face -face when you meet the client, when you can go through with those, all those questions. Video meeting due to pandemic, we are now making our briefings uh, through uh, like Zoom or, or Google Meets. And the worst one is by letter. As I mentioned before, I hate doing briefings by letter or I do not think that it's the best thing to make it like automated because as I mentioned, client doesn't, well, clients usually underestimate the value of certain information and overestimates another part. So we know what we need to know. So this is the very important thing. Try to make it face to face or uh, with a video meeting. So important things, only people directly involved in the product project participate in the meeting with the client. Yes, so no random people there. Uh, second one, don't forget to introduce all team members to the clients. Yes, who is that? This is our graphic designer, for example. 
announce the schedule of the meeting. What are you going to discuss? How much will you spend on it? It's always around one hour or 45 minutes. Uh, just as I did before at the very start of this lecture. And for the meeting, you need to prepare a brief, a document with all the questions. So let's move on. A briefing structure. Here comes the main, the most important part. What, what is that? So a basic, it always starts with basic information about the company and the product. Yes. First of all, the name of the company. Yes. Uh, fields industry of the business, the meaning of the name. This is very important thing. Uh, we with our project manager have absolutely forgotten to ask this question on the last one. So this is very important thing. How long has the company been established and how big is the company, including employees, locations? Because, uh, well, you should know where your logo, your identity will appear. Yeah? If it's only Latvia or maybe it's somewhere in Indonesia or, or Russia, you need to also keep in your mind the location. So values and mission of the company. This is very important thing. Uh, this brief is based more on a visual identity design. This is very important. I hope you understand that the branding is not a logo. It's not like fonts or, or colors. It's more connected with the visual identity design. Branding also always includes like a brand strategy with the, with the values and missions and ambitions and customer journeys. And basically this is a market research. So um, this is uh, actually a brand strategy in our agency costs. It, it's more expensive than a standardized uh, logo design or identity, visual identity design. So this is a brief for identity. We're not going to talk about brand strategy. There will be a lot of different, another question. Significant achievement and successes. Yes, maybe, maybe they will point that they they have only women board members. And this is something interesting that you can play out with your branding, identity design, I'm sorry. What's your unique selling propositions? Yes, what, what, what it's, it questions, there's this question more connected with the competitors. We're gonna talk uh, about it a little bit later. What are your weaknesses? This is also kind of tricky and important question. Uh, who is involved in the decision-making process? Who is the actual decision-maker? And this is the thing we, uh, the most important for us, because we've got a case when one of the, I will not, the names, I'm sorry, NDA. So one of the shareholders of the large company came to us and uh, well, we started our, and there was a request both for identity design and brand strategy. And the aim, he said that, well, we, are, we want to attract, to engage new customers. We want to change our sales strategy and we want more customers, new groups, new target groups. We made a huge market research. We made a brand strategy, absolutely new. Uh, he was happy. But then uh, by the time he came, he came to us and said, I'm sorry, no. I said, why? Because other shareholders who have like a more strength, more power in decision-making said no. And uh, this is the thing we didn't know if we, if, we, if we knew that before there would be no failure. So when we met these other decision-makers, they said, wait, we don't want to change anything. We want to refresh this identity. We, we don't need any new customers. We want to show our existing customer base that we are growing and changing and keeping up with the time and that's all. And this is a absolutely different aim. So this is a very important question. Who is involved in this decision-making process? Are you talking with the head of marketing, but the, the actual decision-maker is a chief executive officer or a founder? You need to know it. Or maybe his wife, you know, those typical things when, well, my, my, wife, my wife told it's bad. You need to know that. 
So the current situation of the brand, very important questions also. Why do you need the service right now? This question is connected with the previous blog. Yes, why do you need, do you need, what's your aim? You want to engage new customer group, new target group, or maybe you want to show your existing uh, customer base that you are changing and something like it's an image thing, or maybe you are opening a new office in the new location and you want to like make a rebranding for this specific specific region. This is different types of, uh, of, of um, aims. So what goals in your opinion should the new identity design achieve? Yes. What kind of branding and marketing materials do you have already? Well, it's uh, kind of often when uh, project manager uh, don't ask this question. This is very important. Maybe the company already have made a lot of, uh, I don't know, market researches. Maybe they have a brand strategy of the previous identity, or maybe they have uh, different marketing materials. Take them. It would be easier for you not discussing all that on the briefing stage, but you will get those materials and you, you will have the clear, uh, clear picture. So what is liked about the current identity and what is disliked about the current identity? This is a very personal question, but still maybe, maybe they will say, well, we can keep this, this greenish color and another now. So, and the very important question, are there any elements from the current branding that need to be preserved? And it's connected always with the client's budget. For example, he come to you and he said, okay, let's make a whole new identity. We're changing, I don't know, everything. And when you're asking that, is there any elements? You can help your client with a question. We had um, a case when the clients came, we, have, we, we asked this question and he said, oh, wait, yes, uh, our office uh, have like green and yellow colors. And it would be perfect that we can preserve and keep those colors because we are not ready to pay for a renovation of the whole office. This is a very practical question. We need just to, to, to refresh the logo and make it pretty on the social media and that's all. Don't, don't change anything regarding the colors. You may add one new, but please basic colors, let it be yellow and green, for example. Talking about the competitors, who are your competitors? What is your pricing policy in relation to the competitors? What sets you apart from your competitors? And it it's, it's always goes along with the unique selling propositions. Yes, what, what, why are you so unique? You are cheaper, you know, maybe more affordable, or maybe you are like a luxury high level class and you, are, you have another specific target audience and then so on and so on and so on. Where are you on this competitor's matrix? We need to understand this. So, yes. The next one is the audience. Yes, a very important questions. How would you describe your average customer, uh, consumer by age, gender, income, habits, etc., etc.? Maybe they have uh, already made a uh, market segmentation and they know a different segments of their audience yes so uh, what motivates the consumer to use your service the problem your service solves this is very important every service should solve a very specific problem it's easier to promote it so what can stop a consumer from using your product or service for example if the client says well uh, we have only three people working with us. So if, if there will be a lot of new customers, well, we, we will not be able to afford him, them, uh, our product. This is very important thing. You need to keep it in mind also. What are the main channels for interacting with your existing customer base? And what is your sales strategy? What are the main channels of engaging your customers? And a very clever and good project manager, if they will get this information, he will also uh, suggest maybe you will need further uh, our digital marketing, performance marketing services, you know, like Google ads, Facebook ads, maybe we can help with that. And it's usually like it's developing your collaboration further also. 
Uh, we, uh, by the way, we have uh, one client who came uh, to us with the request for visual identity design. And while we were briefing him, he said, well, it's a kind of good idea. I think, I think after we will end this project, we can make like a monthly support. So I will ask you to do that and that and that. Well, who knows? Yes, who knows if you if you if you ask this question, maybe you will uh, you will like develop this collaboration in your future. If you could tell your customers about your company in one sentence, what would it sound like? Yes, like one sentence. That's all. And this is very important. I love that question. I call it explain me. Explain me like I'm five. Yes, explain me like I'm five. Try to explain your service or a product for a five-year-old child. Um, we had an example with an uh, accounting company. Uh, there was a finance person. Uh, he was working a lot with accounting and finances. So, uh, well, imagine the situation when you are trying to squeeze her imagination like imagine your product this is a very common question in a lot of briefs yes imagine your product is like an animal or like a person can you imagine that person who worked all their lives in, in finances and accounting field uh, it's very confusing so if you're trying to make it more and to make it more in an analytical way explain your service for a five-year-old child this is they, they are trying to 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 analyze and to use very simple words and symbols and that will help you in future yes and uh, talking about this this accountant it was like oh well okay they, they have an app app some some kind of app that like collects or your accounting document and he was like well um Yes, I could. I think this is like a shelf with the documents where you can all your things are safe in one place. And this helps you to go on with maybe naming or visual identity and so on and so on. Technical information. Yes. Where will the new identity be used primarily? Where will the client most often see the logo? Because yes, if, if there's a logo only a digital or maybe it's somewhere on outdoor advertisement or leaflets, you need to keep that in mind. Format of your logo, this is only a sign or font only or both font and sign. Uh, is there any descriptor and tagline like a slogan or a website or a field of activity? For example, I don't know, X66 online magazine or online shop whatever uh, language of yes I'm sorry that was I guess microphone so okay whatever so let's go on language of the text part of the logo is it English Latvian Russian other language what do we use symbols and images that relate to your industry that can be used by us as a hint of your company's business for example if uh, your uh, client says okay we can like make it not only like a font only logo we can use some kind of symbols and the icon okay so let's let's make a little brainstorm about that are there any restrictions and wishes yes about the colors objects and other things and if you see, if you notice, we have no abstract questions regarding colors or fonts or anything or shapes. Do you want a sense or serif fonts? We don't ask those questions and I will explain you why, because that doesn't work on practice actually. And this is only two questions, two types of questions. Do you have any wishes or restrictions? For example, he will say no black color at all. I hate that. Okay, fine. He knows that he will never accept something, some black logo. Fine. Uh, next one. Are you ready to purchase licenses for commercial materials like fonts or videos and illustrations? Because usually and very often clients think, client think that, uh, well, it's included in your price of your service. That's not. We know that uh, every graphic designer know that font can cost like a lot of money. So you should warn your client about that. Maybe if you like this font, you should be ready to pay 
3,000 more if you like it. Uh, examples of logos you like and you don't like. Well, actually, these preferable among your competitors or in your field. Well, actually, I don't like asking this question in that way. Those two questions you can include in case you are writing, like in the, your briefing by letter, you can ask these questions. But if you ask it like face to face or in a video briefing, a client usually get confused. They like, oh, let me think. So it would be easy if you are preparing for a brief, like a, for a proper briefing, it's easier to do it, to do it like that. You are already collected a logos of, of that company specific competitors or similar companies. And you're showing your clients and you say, rate those logos from one to 10 and what criteria were you taking into account? Why you don't like it? Yes, maybe. And you, 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 this is a very important part. You need to understand why do they like the right one. Not, if, he's, if the client says, oh, okay, I, I think everything is like one. And this via Latvia, I rate it like 10. And you, you say, okay, let's move on to the next question. No, you need to ask this. This is remember, the briefing is always a collaboration between two parties. You need to ask this additional question. And this is the, the most amazing thing about briefing face to face. You can ask these questions at this very moment. Yes, why do you like it? And the client says, well, you know, I don't like the red color, but I feel like this logo is kind of modern. Yes, it's, it's like, I think it's trendy. And you, in that time, you will understand, okay, fine. He thinks it's trendy. Great, let's move on. You need to understand, as I mentioned before, yes, you need to under, you need to be the psychic. You need to understand why does he choose this one? Why? In what informational bubble does he live? Okay, basic visual media. Where we will, what kind of logo, yes, we are developing? Where will it be? What platforms will be with that logo? Okay sign and logo do you need only main version of the logo or do you need responsive logo options i i hope you know what is responsive logo responsive is where uh where you can use this logo on the different types of platforms for example on your menu on your web page you can't use like if your logo is like vertical you you, you need to you need to, to to use it as a horizontal so you need to to have like a different responsive logo that you can shape it and turn it and make the symbol near that textual part on a phone and on below and so on and so on. So this is a responsive thing. Color palettes and graphic style. Do you need only basic color scheme or maybe you need an additional color scheme? Do you need a background pattern? This is also a very important thing. Uh, fonts and typography, I guess it's, 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 uh, it's clear. Yes, recommended typesetting fonts. Icons, pictograms and style of photos and illustrations. What kind of things do you want? Do you need like department icons or maybe you need an examples of illustrations. We show you how you need to brand all your photo materials, yes, or video materials or illustrations. What type of shapes do you use? Uh, corporate documentation, yes, business cards, forms, envelopes, uh, leaflets and folders, yes, what kind of docu corporate documentation do you need, do, will you use? Next one is digital media, so it's, do you need a presentation slides or do you need so-called social media kit, yes, with all those covers and profile pictures, do you need that? I have added also the integration of style on the website. But uh, actually, this is a very different service. Yes, developing a, a visual identity of the website, you need a UX UI designer. So this is an absolutely different thing. So I, I, I put it in italic. So souvenirs, clothing and transport. Yes, pens, packages, flags, mugs, T-shirts, loyalty cards, badges, anything you can imagine, uniform, transport, what kinds of those things you need. And usually when the, if the client have chosen the special package, 
Yes, uh, you remember I've told you that we are sending out the standardized packages. There always are included like few things. He cannot like pay three euros and, 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 and then he come and, well, I, I want everything of that. No, that doesn't work like that. You pay more, you get more. So the next one is interior, exterior, yeah? where, where this logotype will appear, entry group, office signages, department signages, facade signage, exhibition stand, where does it appear? And uh, promotional materials, billboards, uh, leaflets, brochures, and point of share materials. Uh, questions that are common in other briefs. This is my favorite part. But in practice, they do not work at all. So if you Google, if you Google and look some some more information about briefs, you will find like standardized questions like, what impression should the new logo make? What is the character of your logo? Is it traditional? Is it friendly or corporate? Is it high end, cost effective, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera. You see, this is like a very abstract questions talking about the concrete visual thing so let's face this is the typical thing i have i have i have experienced it before a lot of times so high end and sophisticated yes when the client says i want i feel that the the character of my logo is high end and sophisticated what high end and sophisticated in your opinion and something like for example that or that or maybe that but in fact High-end and sophisticated in your client's opinion could be that, or that, or that. You know those size of person when they say, well, is it, it's boring, I don't think it's sophisticated. You remember about those informational bubble. He lives in absolutely another informational bubble. So I don't really trust and I don't really believe in those questions. So next one. Should the logo be minimal or detailed? What colors and shapes do you prefer? Like, do you like blue? Or maybe uh, maybe we can make it more sharper and so on and so on. So this is the actual thing. Yes, what client says during the briefing? Well, I think blue color is boring. Let's not use it. So what clients chooses at the end, this is the actual screenshots of our, uh, one of our cases. So blue is boring, but in the end, well, I, I like it. It's kind of cute. Yes, he will never predict his own wishes regarding the concrete visual things. So imagine this one I love also, I have mentioned before uh, about that. Imagine your brand is a person. What is he like? And you know, we're like in that, in that time, we're like squeezing the imagination of our client. Well, typically those are people from business. Yes, they are, or for example, not only chief executive officers, that could be marketing managers. They have a lot of job. They work with, with, with uh, documents. And now you are trying to squeeze the, the, the creative thing out of them. That's not their business. This is your task. You should be the creative one so you remember we have added some question like try to explain to a five years old child this is a different type to ask the same actually thing to a client so then the the logical question is how to determine the visual direction if abstract question don't work at all okay we have collected all this information yes we have we know what we, what we, what 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 type of business and industry and the customer base we know the the competitors, but how how can we determine? And there is a very simple thing. If I ask you a question, imagine two two um, like I don't know like two animated heroes, yes, Kiki and Booba. If I ask you this question, how would you think? What do you think? How, how would Kiki and Booba look like? I think if I ask you this question, your answers will differ. Some say, well, I think it's a dog or it's a cat. Someone will, will draw absolutely abstract thing. The, the, and it is so-called Kiki and Booba effect. But if I show you this picture, and if I ask you who is Booba and who is Kiki, look at this picture. Uh, this is actually a real Kiki and Booba effect. 
Yes, it's a mapping experiment, which was first documented by Wolfgang Kohler in 1929 using nonsense words. So 95% of respondents named Buba, yes, this one with the, with the round, uh, round corners, and Kiki is the right one. So acute angled one. So the, the, that confirmed that, and, and the most interesting fact, the, those type of respondents, yeah, they were absolutely different people. They were kids and adults, they, they of different genders, different cultures, different language, different ages. They all said one and the same thing. The booba is the round one, the kiki is this one. So uh, here comes debriefing. Once again, I will mention that our debriefing is uh, we ask additional questions and well, basically it always happened like debriefing is if your team will have a oh, wait, we have forgotten to ask that or you have like additional info and you need to ask different questions, but we do debriefing with showing Yes, debriefing, I'm sorry, is a repeated, yes, interview with the customer in order to obtain more detailed information about all components of the project. At this stage, we form a unified vision of the future product. And in our agency, that's not a scientific proven. <laughs> I, will, I, will, I will repeat that. At the debriefing stage, we show the client words with visual references, yes, with kikis and boobas, in order to determine this stylistic direction and colors and shapes and other details of the preferred visual communication. Yes, for example, I will show you a real uh, board with references. Those are logos we don't make. There's other, other designers. Usually we even they copyrights. Uh, uh, so this is the thing we had a service Who's, uh, who's the first letter, they had a textual logo, they had the first letter D, and they had a word dot in, in, that, in, that, in, the, in the naming yes, of the company. So first of all, we showed them a different styles. Yes, look at this one. This is like a 3D graphics. Yes, you see the dot here in the center. And we, in that, in that time, we see how clients are reacting. Oh, I think it's it's too complicated, I guess. Okay, fine, next one. You see the dot, also dot, but it, it's like inside the D uh, thing because we, on the briefing, on the first briefing stage, we the client said, okay, I need a logo with, um, uh, I need the logo like with a symbol and with a textual part. Okay, now we are talking about symbols. Uh, this one is also like a shape of, you see that we have collected with D letters because this is a very specific, you can show absolutely random things. Yes, client always thinks like with, with his product. Okay, he sees something similar. We show that one, it's like a duo tones. Yes, a little bit different patterns and colors. So um, next one. Also, yes, you see like more minimalistic things, but with a little bit color. And also we see like a dot here, for example, a square dot or a round dot and absolutely minimal, no colors at all, black and white. And that always helps you, this debriefing stage with mood words, yeah, help you to define what really a client wants to see at the end. What is he thinking? What does he like? We also showing a different types of uh, other brand books and identity design boards, yes. Like, uh, like look, here is uh, blue color and dots. Yes, like, look at that. Maybe you see this in other shapes with dots. And next one is the greenish, you see, like we are changing colors in different types. It's everywhere, like dots. This pattern is repeating, but in, in, in different styles, like you see here is a square. So you can play with the dot, like it's a square, not with a, with a circle. Uh, you see like it's diff different color, uh, yellow, maybe you like yellow and these poppy things, very bright. Um, yes, and at this stage, we usually try to use very different colors and shapes, but very connected with the, um, with the specific, uh, uh, specific brand and specific request. So at that time, we see the client reaction. 
And it absolutely always differs from the first briefing stage. It, it very common situation is yes, when client says, well, please no blue, but suddenly in the end, he chooses something blue. Yes, and he changed his mind, that's okay. So this is the things we're doing on the debriefing stage. And uh, the next one, so the last one actually sources to look for references. I recommend like it's a typical one. So all graphic designers know that. Behance, Dribble, uh, Pinterest, or Google it. Just Google by the keywords, visual identity or some, or some, some keywords you use and you search for a specific type of references. And um, in my in my point of view, this is I I I repeat it. This is not scientifically proven at all, excepting Booba and Kiki effect. This is real thing, guys. So this is only my experience, and we feel it like this works better than the classical like briefing stages. So. Um, Yes, and we are, I look like it's 1820, so I guess there was an hour. And uh, do you have any question, guys? Feel free to ask any language you know, Russian, Latvian, English, feel free. Do you have any? So if you, if you actually don't have any questions, I will uh, feel free, really feel free to add me on Facebook or LinkedIn or write me an email because uh, we, are, as an agency, we are open to invite any, any interested in if you want to get an internship or a practice, if you want to, to know our team better, our graphic designers, if you want to work with me, please write me, add me on really on Facebook, Instagram, you can find me, whatever. Uh, just write me a letter. I will be really happy if you like this lecture or not. Your feedback is really important to me. So uh, still, do you have any questions maybe? Or was it, was it really useful for you? Uh, was there any information, something that, that opened something new for you? Um, I had some questions, but you mostly answered them all during the presentation. Thank you for that. Uh, I also really liked uh, how you had the list of questions and you were uh, accentuating in the bold which one you're discussing. I took that. I took a point to that for my future presentations also, and I really find that uh, uh, these guest lectures are really useful because people are talking from experience about the real world, not uh, like uh, <laughs> let's say like that. Yes. Uh, but uh, I maybe have more practical question about how do you start uh, like company or agency like that, that uh, deals with clients, with design and stuff like that. Like where do you even start? Do you have to have some portfolio beforehand? How do you get new clients if you are new, if you are not known, like how does this process this starts is, to roll up. This is actually a very good question because uh, I know I, I had uh, one more part of this presentation, but it was too long. That's why I just threw it off. But that was about the paradigms with the relationship with the clients, like win-win. You don't have only win-win situations with the clients. You also handle it has like win-lose, lose-win or lose-lose, the worst one. So if we're talking about the, the, if we're talking about your portfolio, this is the most important thing. Actually, we also started, we, we united our team, made basically the, the, the more with digital marketers and social media managers, yes. Our, we didn't, did not have like a strong visual identity portfolio. And at the very first start, we just came to our friends and said, hey, do you need a really new branding? And this is the, the amazing thing when the client doesn't pay you is that, that, that he, can, he could not make any revisions at all. You're doing something for free, but you're instead you're getting a cherry on top on your portfolio because it's a very usual and common thing when you're doing something when the client pays, it, it, sooner or later there, there will come a client who says, who will say, I understand maybe it's trendy and you know more, but I like this and do that. And in the end, client is like a win-lose situation when the client does like his identity and you don't. And you say like, please don't put any my name on it 
please don't do, don't say anyone I did it. So instead of making this, okay, you earn money, of course, but your portfolio is, is empty. So the first step, if you're a graphic designer, I really, or you're a team of two, yes, project manager, graphic designer, I really recommend to collect this portfolio from your friends. I know a lot of graphic designers who just came up with the random names. Okay, let's let this is IT company something, X, X IT or whatever. And they have created amazing things because clients come to you then like, a, like they, they, they know your works. And if this is like a chain reaction, yes, if they come uh, because they have seen your portfolio it would minimize the risk of the revisions because they trust you because you have they have seen your works and they don't that it doesn't matter did you pay it well in that or did you make it for free for someone the result is amazing and this is very important start working for free if you want to really gain this authority so i i hope i answered your question yes you did uh, i have one more question uh, are there any uh, differences really between creating new identity from the scratch or rebranding company like which one is more difficult which one is more fun to do well actually this is uh i thought some years ago i thought that rebranding is easier it's not <laughs> it's not it's the same job as a whole new identity and it's easier to make a new identity from zero neither you're making rebranding something because you remember that clients also are you they are human beings and they will want to preserve something or they, they this is very very mm -hmm. difficult actually rebranding is is kind of challenging thing too it's 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 really interesting in both ways but yeah it's it's both difficult i i i i said that making new identity from zero, it's it's easier mm -hmm. than to rebrand. Thank you. And the last question, which is your favorite uh, part of your job that you enjoy the most? Ah, uh, well, you know, my dream when I started to work uh, with my team, because we have, as I mentioned, we have united the team of brilliant uh, mm -hmm. guys and girls. Uh, we have worked like an in-house marketing teams in different huge uh, projects such as for example a digital media for riga city council we worked as a team and my biggest dream was was to collect those guys because actually this is my family now it's kind of professional family in that meaning and this is the favorite i i love working with them because i know maybe if i if i would choose choose the way going like a head of marketing I would maybe I could pay be pay more yes but mm -hmm. I like working with them this is really the most exciting thing that you are creating a brilliant things together with your friends so I, I guess communicating with people is the amazing both with clients they are also amazing <laughs> everyone I have seen a lot of them sexism <laughs> ageism I've been through that. I love all of them. That's brilliant. A very good school of life. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, hello, I want also to ask a question. Feel free. Uh, but it will be like more abstract, not about the brand identity, but more about the inspiration when you need to solve the problem. Uh, where do you actually get this inspiration? How? how do you feel about the copying is this like a part uh, uh, like there is a thought that everything is already invented and you just like copy from others so where do you take your inspiration because i know that you had uh, i actually already looked through what your agency have made and there were some i think amazing solutions so i'm very interested how do you yeah, to do it. <laughs> Thanks. Well, actually, we have started like a year ago, so I don't. I, I hope that our portfolio will include a lot of uh, different interesting things because it's it's usually we are like we uh, we are signing NDA non disclosure agreement for some amazing products, and we I want to share it, but I can. 
uh, okay, but no, still. So uh, regarding this coping thing, I know what you're talking about. This is a very good, good question. And uh, actually you cannot invent a bicycle once more, but there's a difference between coping and inspiring. Yeah, the, what, the, there is a, a fantastic book, uh, create a stove, steel like um, an artist, I think, steel like an artist, Kradika Kudornik. Yes, this is a very a, a fantastic thing. I really recommend to read. Yes, it's about inspiration because some there is some things that you are inspiring from. And this is the thing why I mentioned before, I didn't. Uh, switch on my ad block. I want to see that hell from every company. I like looking the retargeting campaigns on me. I want to analyze how they are working. Yes, they are inventing new and new techniques. And this is amazing. Even if we are talking about like, 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 like uh, spammers, yes, and those who are trying to steal your passwords. They also, can you imagine, I've seen it on Instagram, they are trying A-B testing. That means they, they, they send the same message in different types, in different fonts. And even, even those guys are testing and experimenting. And this is, uh, well, regarding where I'm taking the inspiration from, uh, I'm trying to, of course, I'm, I'm trying to look after what's happening in advertisement world in different countries. We have, we are working in a Discord or Slack, you may be the collective messenger for our team. And we have a channel where, where a special channel for um, useful things, useful cases. When some, someone, for example, a project manager or graphic designer, they have seen something brilliant, an interesting case they throw it to this channel and we're discussing look that's great let's 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 make something of that stealing is not um it's not an answer of course this is very stupid when you steal like like the making the same hoping but inspiring combining the ideas of a different things this is very good i really recommend to read this book this is really good this kradika uh, kudoznik still like an artist i can send if you write me i will send you a link this is you will find all the answers there thank you very much <laughs> you're welcome you're welcome it's easy to read by the way it's very thin but it's it's a lot of a lot of drawings there you will find it interesting trust me okay Thank you very much, Anita. I just want to say maybe some students doesn't feel confident to ask questions right now. Uh, so I think maybe you can write me questions uh, via email. Yes, until Friday. And I will contact Anita and we will have a chance to discuss all your questions uh, during our nearest uh, lecture. <laughs> Okay, great, great. You can write me or you can add me, as I mentioned before on Facebook, write me an email, of course, also feel free. I will be waiting for you really, guys. Thank you for amazing questions. That was really good. Thanks. Uh, thank you very much, Anita, for your amazing lecture. It was very useful, very interesting, extremely good structured. And uh, I think that uh, everybody is happy that have attended to this lecture. Thank you very much for your for your attending. And, thank you. Uh, thank you for having me here. Thank okay, you. thank you very much. So I have one more new listener. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you for today and see you on Monday and on Friday. So have a nice week. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.